So there's the general form of our wave function for the electric field. So, to, so the couple of things we have to determine now at this point is we have to find the frequency now the and we also have to find the amplitude of our electric field we already know what the value of 2 pi over lambda is that value i'll just go ahead and call it k this is k right here and that value is given to us from the magnetic field which is 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radians per meter. Okay, so if we could find the frequency and the magnitude or the amplitude of the electric field, we will have then found everything we needed for our electric field function. So let's try and find the frequency. Well, we don't know the frequency, but we have an expression that allows us to find the wavelength of this wave. And we know there is a relationship between the speed of a wave, its wavelength, and its frequency. That is, the speed of a wave is equal to the product of its wavelength and frequency. So this C here is the speed of light. The K written above is from the magnetic field. So if we want to find the frequency, we need an expression for the wavelength. And we can get that from this first line above. The wavelength is just 2 pi over what we physicists call the wave number k. Remember, that is in the magnetic field. So here is our wavelength expressed as k. So let's put that in for our frequency term. We have the speed of light over 2 pi k. Our frequency then becomes the product of the wave number times the speed of light over 2 pi. Well, our our wave number was given by our magnetic field function to be 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radians per meter. The speed of light is given as 2.9979 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. This is divided by 2 pi. When we cancel some units, we get a result that is a reciprocal second, which is a hertz. And when I plug this into my calculator, I get that the frequency is 658 gigahertz. Wow, that's, that's a very high frequency. It's actually on the order of the frequency of your cell phone if you have one. Cell phones and other communication devices are uh, typically operate in the gigahertz range. So here is the frequency of our electromagnetic wave, 658 gigahertz. Now, the last thing we need to do to find the function for the electric field is to figure out its amplitude. And to figure out its amplitude, I'm going to use the relationship that the speed of light is equal to the ratio of the magnitude of the electric field to the magnetic field. Now for this problem, that's going to simply be the ratio of the amplitude of the electric field to the magnetic field because the cosine terms are identical. When we rearrange this, we get the amplitude of the electric field is equal to the product of the amplitude of the magnetic field times the speed of light. We were told that the amplitude of the magnetic field is 8.25 nano Tesla. The speed of light is 2.9979 
times 10 to the eighth meters per second, you should recognize that a Tesla meter per second is the same set of units as a volt per meter. So when I plug this into my calculator, I get 2.47 volts per meter. Now we have just about everything we need to write our electric field function. So remember, we have that the electric field is a function in this form for this problem. So this term right here, the angular frequency, is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of our oscillations. So we're going to take 2 pi and multiply it to the result that we got for our frequency. And when we do that, we get 4.13 times 10 to the 12th radians per second. So that's extremely large. But that'll work for us for this problem, because an electromagnetic wave of very short wavelength has a very high frequency of oscillation. So now we have all the pieces. We could write the electric field function as being equal to minus 2.47 volts per meter cosine of 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radians per meter x plus 4.13 times 10 to the 12th radians per second t parallel to the z-axis.